know this is a nano medicine. I uh, mean, uh, you can medicine as you know, and uh, using this nanotechnology, if you are doing something for delivery or whatever, maybe then we call this is a nano medicine. So today, more or less, uh, I'm very sure, you know, since uh, many, I think that in the morning, uh, Dr. Alekha Das has given a very nice talk. You know, uh, I have not mentioned also, I have visited his lab uh, in 2008 for, for a couple of months. Um, so. I will give some introduction, you know, how this nanotechnology come up and uh, what are the uh, products available in the market. And uh, more or less, next I will cover, you know, what we are doing in our lab. I will just focus one of my students recently, we have done a little bit for, for, for uh, nanomedicine for cancer stem cells, for breast cancer. And of course, I will a little bit discuss on this nanomedicine for uh, you know for COVID, as you know, COVID is, uh, gives everything. It is a lesson for us. You know. So anyway, so I'll I'll cover maybe in one hour. I will cover everything. Uh, so please, you know, and in the last, if you have any questions, it's most welcome. So. These are the couple of slides, you know, maybe I'll not take much time because, you know, already my, uh, I know, you know, a few scientists already discussed. So nanotechnology again defined as very, very simple way you can tell, you know, by using the nanometer tool, if you are doing some something we call this is nanotechnology. The same way when we are telling, you know, when we are telling this is biotechnology, more or less using the biology as a tool the same way this is uh, nanotechnology and uh, if, uh, you know it is again also if you define uh, one meter one nanometer is one billionth of a meter or eighty thousand if you divide a width of a human arm hair then the amount of uh, the, the length you will get it we call this is a nanometer this is very very you know in the naked eye it is not possible to see the nanomaterials but due to the advancement of uh, microscope like uh, transmission electron microscope or um, scanning electron microscope and atomic force microscope you can you can see in the in, in the lab base how how you prepare your particular systems in the in the range of nano centimeter nano nano nanometer Nanotechnology and enabling technology that would change the nature of almost every human with objects in the next century. I think this is a National Science and Technology Council 2000. It gives a good sense, you know. So maybe what, what, what does it mean? You know, with the time you see, you know, everyone, you're, you're, right now, if you tell, you know, the lifestyle is like this, you know, in the from morning to evening, if you think of, you know, we are, more or less, we are using a lot of things through nanotechnology products, but we are expecting maybe in a couple of years, maybe in, 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 a, in a long term, you know, maybe after a couple of years. So if you think the number of products are increased, so we will see, uh, we will use more products uh, day by day. So that's why it is uh, giving, they have defined it like this. So maybe in the next uh, decade, so we will see many products are coming and more or less if you see every year, you know, products number is increasing, not only for healthcare, in, in every field, you know, if you look now, nano urea is there, nano fertilizer, it's a huge, uh, you know, uh, application in the agriculture. If you look up every alternate day, you see there are many startups are coming, you know, for, to, to deliver. Uh, these things, uh, nano fertilizer, nano uh, uh, urea, everything in it, and is a huge impact. Also, nano herbicide uh, is coming, you know, so uh, it has uh, other benefits, you know. So we are not going, I am not going details, but but it has a huge impact. What I mean, you know, not only in the healthcare, it is it has a huge impact in, in, in agriculture, agriculture, and the same thing also, if you look, you know, it has a huge impact on the defense. So, you know, and aerospace, this, this, uh, because everyone looking for, you know, how to make your uh, metals, will be, the metal will be uh, lightweight, you know, and only, only nanotechnology can help. 
So you can, uh, you know, before going to this, if you look, uh, how it come up, you know, this is Professor Richard Fenman, you know, he got his Nobel Prize in 1965. He gave a lecture in 1959 at uh, Caltech, you know, this is California Institute of Technology, where he first time defined, you know, the word is your top to bottom or bottom to top. So that gives a sense, you know, so then, then it come up. So I, I have a slide for the history, you know, and uh, these slides, so what, what I mean, you know, is just like, uh, you know, we, uh, taking the picture from the Google, you know, what happens. So if you look, this is the uh, vacuum tube technology, it's from 1900 to 1950. This is a time scale, you know, it is giving, you know, you should, you should have these things in your mind, you know, how, how we are coming up, how in the next, next couple of years, how you want to use our non replaced product. So in 19 to 1950, it is the vacuum tube technology, you know, this radio, radar, television. And next is your 1950 to 2000, it is the cell phone, computers, transistor radio, the internet. But as you look, you know, this figure, this, this figure again, it is not for us, it is for developed countries like US or European Union and all. So I, I, I know, you know, so when I was a student in, I did my PhD in 99, there was no cell phone and a couple of, uh, you know, rich guys, they, they kept this cell phone, you know, the incoming 10 rupees and outgoing is 15 rupees. It's so expensive, you know, in 2000, 99 and 2000. But again, you see in, in a couple of years, I think by the 2000, 2005, if you look, everyone having a cell phone in, in uh, so whoever, you know, who is selling the vegetables or who is in packing your garbage, whatever, maybe, you know, everyone having the cell phone. And right now, if you look, everyone, every alternate house, maybe at least they must have one or two smart Android tele uh, cell phones. So you see how, how the technology is, you know, improves. So now what is happening, if you look this 2000, 2050, we are, we are telling it will be a nanotechnology era. So nano robots, molecular electronics, wearable wireless, internet applications. This is just I'm showing, you know, it is part of uh, the nanotechnology, but the other parts, you know, nano, nano robotics, nano drug delivery, these are nano things in, in your agriculture and all. So now it's 2021, we are expecting maybe in a couple of years or maybe in next 10 years, you will have a huge number of products come to the market and it's coming you know so no, no doubt we have a huge number of products in different field of uh, application to the human being so this is just impo impact of economic as you know you know you need the money you know all, otherwise they will not work so the company they always think of how, how to make money so since it has a huge impact on the economy so people of the companies are going to make these nanotechnology products. This is just a slide, you know, history. If you look, this is Einstein, then somewhere in this is Richard Feynman. Then this is the term nanotechnology given by the professor Taniguchi in Japan in 1974. Then the development of scanning electron microscope in 1981. Uh, then this is the fellow Eric Drexler, you know, uh, he wrote two books. Uh, it gives the uh, in, in, in drug delivery aspects. And uh, uh, then uh, I think 2000, this is the, what I have shown in our National Language Initiative by the US. If funded like anything, you know, a couple of, they have a different initiative, not for in the, in the, in the area of drug delivery, then uh, pharmaceuticals, your agriculture, and they have a huge, you know, diversified nanotechnology initiative for, 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 human, health, for human being. So, and also well, then question again is after 2000, you know, the come up, they come up for, you know, how to, this nanotechnology can help for human health care. So now this is up to 2016. But what I mean, you know, from the last couple of years, let last 20 years, you know, after 2000, this nanotechnology is coming up in a, in a big way for, 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 for human, for, for the use of human beings in different field. Again, you know, this is again showing differently. This, I think, magnetic nanoparticles, then this is a fullerene functional gold nanoparticles, liposomal ductal and ductal 
this is a product available in the market. I have a com complete list of uh, whatever the nano is in, uh, uh, available in the market. And this is again, you know, now the, this is so we, we can say these are the first generation nanoparticles, you know, they can, they can uh, target to your system through passive targeting, you know, they don't have a uh, uh, targeting mic. So now the question again is so now since we are using the nanotechnology for healthcare, can we have a precise targeting? So if I am looking for to target to the liver, so the, your drug containing your particles should go to the liver, not for other organs. So this we call this is a targeted drug, drug delivery, or we call this is the second generation drug delivery by using your nanomaterials. So again, these are the products available in the market, you know, so I think polymeric missiles, this is hydrogels, then this is pegylated uh, adagen, PG adenosine deaminates, this is a enzyme conjugated with polythene glycol. If you look these things, you know, so I think there are many products, you know, I work with uh, Professor Hiroshi Maida in, in, the, in Kumamoto University, he has given a product, this is SMACs, you know, this is again a pegylated conjugated um, uh, new carcinogen anti cancer drugs. So, then many, many papers, as you know, PEG having a hydrophobic, hydrophilic properties are at the same time also. Once you conjugate the PEG, you know, it gives you stealth properties, so that means it increases your kinetics, pharmacokinetics. So that's why, you know, pre-conjugated, there are many products in the, in the market in the initial stage. Now, what happened, once you are developing some particular systems, you know, again, what you are doing, you know, so we want to give you a coverage of this, um, um, this uh, PG, so what will happen, you know, so there will be a long circulation in the body at the same time. Since it has a long circulation, you know, then, then it can go to different part of your uh, body where you want. And second thing also, when you are having a targeting moiety on the surface, then, then once it has a more circulation, you know, then the it, then the targeting moiety, where you want to target, it will go and bind and it is taken up by the tissue at the and end up with, you know, in the, in the cells. So maybe then, then it will, the drug can release by different mechanism. And the once the drug release from the systems, you know, it kills the other cells and uh, you will be disease free. So these are the, again, these are the uh, products, you know, uh, available. If you go to Google, you put what are the nanomaterials or not, pegylate, air, nano, uh, particle containing drugs and all available in the market, you can get it. So now let a little bit move to the nanomedicine. So again, what I already explain you, you know, nanomedicine is nothing but nanomedicine, nanotechnology works for human healthcare. So as you know, if you have some fever or something, again, we are going to a medicine store and asking for some medicine. So now the question is, can we conjugate, you know, this nanotechnology, this medicine? So for what? No, for, for in the sense, we can, we can at least to increase the therapeutic potential. So by, by this nanotechnology. So what will happen, you know, so what is when you are having some, some, some fever and other things, you know, you are taking a 500 milligram uh, amoxicillin, but you don't need these things, you know, what, uh, what happened, you know, when you are taking a 500 milligram of uh, amoxicillin, you know, so the kinetics is very, very low, you know, you don't need that much. So now the question again is if you can use some nanotechnology based, so then, then, then it can, overpass the oral barriers, you know, so then more drugs can go there. So you don't need a 500 milligram, maybe you need, you need a 50 milligram. At the same time also when you are going for a, you know, doctor is giving some antibiotics or some drugs for, for twice a day or thrice a day. So then the question is, you know, so why you want to take thrice? That means when you are taking once, you know, the kinetics is coming down, going down. So you are taking one more dose, but since if you have a dose, you know, if you have a 24 hours, you know, release in, in, your, in your plasma, then you don't need, you know. So now you look, there are many things, you know, not, not like your antibiotics. There are many drugs available for 24 hours control release. That is again, again, and the, we can't say directly to the nanomedicine, but, but it is one of the, you know, application of this 
nanotechnology to to have a sustained release again the same thing you know when we are talking for nanomedicine for cancer and all you know again what we are looking for can we keep the drug for for a for, for couple of days in, in the in the in the blood system you know so then 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 the drug will have a you know when the drug has more or less have a good kinetics you know so then then it has the ability or potential you know migrate or go to the different parts of the body and it works so again also you know when nanomedicine we are talking again it is nanodiagnostics so medical imaging nanotherapeutics vaccines other things so if you look 10 years back you know so if you are going to a doctor you know then if you have something that fever or a headache or you know some act some some something you know they prescribe the medicine but right now what is happening if you are going to a hospital you know immediately they are telling you do these are the tests you know so now also question is you know can have it or you know, nano nano medicine or nanotechnology can have, have, have some impact on in the, these you know, diagnostics so very nice you know as you know this has a huge surface when 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 you have particular particles you know since the size is less it has a huge surface area where you can you can have some conjugate some or antibodies and all you know so that once it has a huge surface area you know then then it can bind and it can it can bind the you know the the other things so where you want to have a test many uh, fluorophore chromophore or you are giving some imaging agent you know so it, it gives a very nice peak you know so more or less with a less number of cells also you can or less blood you can you can have a test so nano diagnostics i think uh, you know some something is coming up and at the same time also imaging when you are going for imaging means i'm talking for ct scan or mri as you know you know this so if you are going for a contrast city or, or maybe contrast mri that they are asking you know you have to go for this magnetic particles or, or some gallatinium based uh, particles because you need a contrast you know to give the, the image should be perfect to know where it is you know in this angle you know there are many systems are coming off at the same time as you know it is silver nanoparticles gold nanoparticles is one of the best example also is coming up for 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 imaging and diagnostics and all again nanotherapeutics we will discuss you know again if you put any drugs which has a therapeutic potential you know if you put these things to the to the to the to the particular to you trap it or conjugate it inside the particular system and deliver you know so again it has a nanotherapeutics so it can enhance as i have already explained you know so it has a high potential it can penetrate to the tissue and also finally you know it can be taken up by the cells in a different mechanism like you know endocytosis receptor mediated endocytosis and all so that means finally the drug containing nanoparticles can enter to the system in a big way and as you know these are if you have these are bicompatible polymers or some other things you know that by taking up this water molecules and it can swells if it is a hydrogel or are breaking up some hydraulic bonds so that drug can come off and it will take care so this is and also vaccine as you know you need some some upper uh, huge or uh, you know advancement in the in in in, in, the, in this area by nanotech yeah well, well i have already explained you know this is uh, the, the basic difference between native drug and drug in nano formulations you know basic drugs these are the problems biological barriers decrease solubility drug resistance enzymatic degradation short plasma half life and system system toxicity as you know when you are taking some drugs you know it it has uh, uh, no no not target to the to any 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 person of your body that's why what happened you know going through the circulation or it it it, it can bind with your digit cells or cancer cells or whatever the uh, you know uh, you have what type of disease at the same time also it can be can react with your you know, normal cells so to reduce that things you know that's why you know when someone is going for in, in the field of cancer if you 
someone is going for some cycle, we call this is taking some chemo. You know, the secondary complication is so high. You know, some some sometimes also secondary complication mortality is greater than you know primary uh, uh, disease. So to to control that type of things, you know, if you have a nano formulation, you know, then then um, you don't need a high dose. You can reduce the dose because you, why you are reducing the dose because it can have a targeting efficacy. So less less of the drug it can work. At the same time, you're saying which half life sustained release that is the you know good phenomena. So it it will be a slow release. So the 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 disease which needs a constant drug concentration on the surface, I think this nanoparticle can solve that problem. Again, I am not going in details. Already I have discussed, you know, this is a passive targeting and active targeting means again in, in what, what happened in the cells, you know. If you are using some some uh, native drugs, so it will have a only the mechanism is diffusion. And diffusion is a concentration dependent. Mechanism. So once what happens? Once the concentration decreases, the diffusion reduces. So to combat that things, you know, if you look at the, your particular system, at least it works on the endocytosis. So once it works on your endocytosis, it is not a concentration dependent. Then the drugs enter the cells. Then it is your, you know, fed up the drug. It's be your early endosomes, late endosomes, and your lysosomes. So that they will take care, and the drug can release to the cytoplasm where it works. What happened in the case of, you know, active targeting, what happens in the surface, uh, you know, we have conjugate some, some active uh, moieties, so what? So there are some surface receptors present in the, in the cells. So what happened, you know, so we want to conjugate some type of, you know, either you can conjugate some antibody or, or some small molecules like folic acid, transparent, there are many, uh, you know, which has the ability to bind to the surface of the, of the, of the cells. So what happened, you know, so they can attract more. So here what is happened, we call this is a receptor mediated endocytosis. So there are some receptors on the surface. So now your, your drug is moving, your particulate surface, but on the particulate surface you have a uh, moiety which have the binding ability, you know. Then they bind, internalize, so we call this is a uh, receptor mediated endocytosis. So that's why, you know, more drug can go and it can precisely target to that side. So that's why, you know, this we call this a second generation nanomaterials for this uh, active target. So now the question is, this is a nanoparticle, this is a material size, safe surface, you can conjugate to whatever you want. Already I have discussed, you know, the surface, so you can conjugate some ligand, antibody, peptide, aptamer, you can conjugate some uh, some small molecules like your, uh, uh, you can conjugate you know, folic acid, you can conjugate transparent, also for, for oral delivery you can conjugate some lectin and uh, and also the other other good things is you know if you, if you can if you can think of uh, you know to conjugate or something then you can you can uh, you can uh, you know generate some groups you know by 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 putting some some linkage you can have some 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 that means we can we call like this you can functionalize the materials as per your wish so if you want to conjugate some some proteins let it has a primary amine amine group is there you know so now the question again is you want to conjugate so now take some uh, polymer or take some surface things you know which have acyl groups you know then then acyl groups and this amine group you know, as you know it is a it gives a skip base you and it's, it's a secondary amine you know and very nicely you can you can you can uh, estimate you know how much conjugate by by FTIR and uh, NMR. So now this this what I am going to show it is here you know you have a functionalized materials. So we call it functionalized means you can you can generate some functional groups on the surface as per your wish to conjugate so to make active targeting and these are the things as you know, carbon nanotubes, metal particles like silver nanoparticles, gold nanoparticles, hydrogel, polymeric particles, dendrimers, protein drug conjugates, liposomes, cellular lipid nanoparticles. These are the vehicles, as you know. You know, if you want to, like, oops, I'm giving a small example. If you want to go to Katak from from Bhuvaneswar, now the question is, 
you know, either you can go by bus or you can go by truck or you go by lorry or you can take a private car. So now the car is again, you know, so if you are going to book a car for in Ola, it is showing you need a four seater, six seater, eight seater, whatever, you know. So now the question is, if you are six, then you will go for a six seater car. If you are four, then why I will go for a six seater, I can go for a four seater car. So same way, you know, so now the question is, once you are a nanotechnologist or a nanobiotechnologist, so now the question, you know where you want to target. You know? So. So now the question is, you know, since you know where you want to target, where you want to target means where in, in the body system, where the particles should go, it is going to the brain or it is going to the bone or it is going to the some cancer tissue or it is going to the, the liver. So accordingly, now the, now you think of what type of delivery vehicle you can think, you, can, you, you need it. You know. So that's why these are the things, you know, uh, so you can you can work on liposomes, you can work on dendrimers, you can work on some inorganic materials like uh, your silver nanoparticles, gold nanoparticles, cerium nanoparticles, zinc nanoparticles. There are many magnetic nanoparticles, you know. Or if you can think of how how to be your polymeric nanoparticles, then what type of a polymer you are looking for? All things, you know. So depend upon so where you want to target. Again, uh, this is structurally what I have discussed. I have just put it here. It is a review article we have published in uh, IGP. Yeah. So let now the question is, you know, so from 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 uh, wow, you know, from I think from the last couple of wow, not couple of years. I think from 80, 87. What I remember from 1987 is the first product. You know, this was. Uh, uh, pegylated smacks, you know, developed by Professor Maida, uh, come to the market, I think in 91 or 92 for in Japanese market. So after that, you know, there are many, you know, this uh, nano formulation in chemical platforms, pegylated uh, proteins, polymeric nanoparticles, missiles. Here is the, and more or less, I think we must know this is Abraxin, you know, this is albumin, albumin coated magnetic nanoparticle. Sorry, albumin coated. Uh, this uh, packet axle is available in India also and also in the US, uh, many countries, and it gives a new sense in, 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 in nanomedicine research. Then this is missiles, is genaxel. This is again a packet axle from from some approved in South Korea. Many things, antibody drug conjugates, virosomes, nanocrystals, gene and and immunotherapy. Nano genome medicine, you know, again, Arapa immune is there. Uh, uh, Peridex, uh, this is inorganic nano formulation like supra uh, spino, you know, super paramagnetic nanoparticles. Peridex approved. Uh, Ferrimoxetol, again, this is we using for, for, for some other disease also. If you have a uh, RBC sort, you know, uh, then also it is a supplement. Nanogels, uh, you know, pegylated, then EAK 16.2, this is cell plasmonic peptide, quantum dots under uh, near infrared nano formulation. Again, also this is in the in the in the market. So now question is let little bit go to the deep our research is on nanomedicine cancer. So choosing a cancer, it is not so easy, it is very, very difficult. You know, cancer cells are much more smarter than us. We have, we, we are telling we are the smarter, but cancer cells are very smart, you know. So they know when, when they are very clever, you know. So if you look, they know once you have, well, the patient is taking a chemo, you know, immediately they know something is coming up, which will kill us. So immediately they will, they will defend like anything, you know, they can develop some, some something on their surface, you know. When second time you are giving the chemo, you know, they, they have the mechanism they can throw out. This is a flux mechanism. It's very, very high, you know, bah, bah, bah. it is very, very important for them, you know, to flux out. So nothing, nothing, they, 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 they don't allow this drug to go to the inside of the particular, inside of the cells. Second thing also, they've secreted a lot of cytokines, you know, so we are not going in details, but, uh, you know, if you read some cancer biology, 
review articles of some books, you know, and you, you can imagine how smart they are. So to 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 gun these things, you know, to catch up that things, you know, it is not so easy. So this is just I'm showing, you know, this is a uh, uh, Tumor and this is our blood vessels and these vessels and all so. so nanomedicine in cancer is a very high impact now for research. So what we are doing and many people are doing. So how to how to how to target this cancer well, nanoparticles to the cancer tissue? Then also we want to mimic. Uh, you know this they when they, they develop their resistance properties or you know they are uh, going through different you know modulator and all you know we want to mimic that mechanism so that your drug can penetrate at the same time also it allow to kill the cancer cells and the things come on again in this regard you know there are many papers i remember many uh, products are available in the market you know example so clinical states these are some of the fd approved and more or less you don't believe in and then right now maybe more than 100 these type of nano formulations are in clinical trials in phase one phase two phase three i have not shown there is maybe again we need one more class you know one more one more session how clinical what are the clinical phase one phase two phase three you know how how it goes in any long years you know couple of years million dollars we are spending you know one one product is coming to the market means you know it is not a joke it, it, it covers at least seven eight years and spending a, I, i'm very sure uh, was a couple of billion dollars they spend to come to the market you know there are many things you have to do so these are the idea approved products available in the market you know and uh, uh, there are some coming to the clinical trials this is i think this is what i talk polymer conjugates neocarcinol study this is max uh, approved by Japan, it was developed from Professor Midas lab where I did my post. -up. Again, these are uh, chemotherapy, targeted therapy, this is immunotherapy, all are in the phase two, phase one, phase three. And immunotherapy is coming up, you know. So don't do anything, you know. You 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 target or you excited or you uh, tune up the immune cells of your own body, you know, they can fight with the cancer. This is a very nice uh, project to work. Then in uh, RNI hyperthermia, uh, then uh, currently approved nanomedicine in the clinic. These are the Taxil, Donoxom, Lipodox, Deposit. These are all, you know, available in the, in the, in the paper. Right now. So what I mean, you know, so just I'm throwing a ball to you. You should think of, you know, last 20 years working, you know, People have published many papers at the same time also a lot of products are coming just you know some human disease you know you think of in for human health there are many so these are the uh, approved nanomedicine in, 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 in the clinic and uh, if you look you know from the last five six years the number increased like anything you know for, for, for clinical trials these are the uh, nanodrugs for other diseases. I think uh, uh, these are the uh, trade name, generic name, and, uh, and this is used for some many, many for other diseases, more or less. These are the polymeric nanoparticles used for hemophilia, prostate cancer, Cohen's heart, this hepatitis C, hepatitis B. Uh, chronic kidney disease, CKD, more or less many, many others for, for kidney disease, you know. So, uh, these are inner nanoparticle, protein nanoparticle, polymeric nanoparticles, many are used for, for uh, other diseases also. That means, you know, this it has a high impact to the society. So, that's why not only for cancer, for other diseases, I'll also you know, I'll have a presentation in how it works in vaccine. So, just uh, I'll go for a uh, you know my lab presentation. So I'll just another ten minutes. I'll go for a presentation of my what we do right now in our lab. Basically, now a uh, little bit I'm giving a uh, well, uh, back background. You know what is happening. You know when you are going for a 
uh, particles of drugs. First of all, the drug is very, very expensive. Second thing, it has a high toxicity. I already explained, you know, secondary toxicity is much more powerful than your primary toxicity. So sometimes what happens, you know, so that's why, you know, as you look, you know, this paclitaxel, or doctor we should let discuss for this, you know. Paclitaxel is not soluble in water, that's why they have a formulation like castor oil and absolute ethanol, 50 So what happened by when, when you dissolve these things, it gives you emulsion. So you can't give directly either intermuscular or IV. So then you have to go for a, this, you have to give in, in your uh, saline bottle. So drop by drop, drop, drop. So it were, you are giving a medicine for, for, for a couple of hours. So what happens, you know, that's why the kinetics has a very, very poor kinetics. So no presentation at all. At the same time also, uh, if, if the patient is have some cardiac toxicity, it has a huge cardiac toxicity. So if, if the patient is again have some, some cardiac problem, you know, so then, then it is difficult to give the anti-cancer drugs. So you see how it has the impact. So that means, so due to the success, toxicity profile, so you don't have a good formulation to give a cancer patient who, is, who has other, other, other problem. So that's why what we are looking for can from the last couple of one a couple of years, I think from the last six, five, six years, I have a little bit shifted my research in let, let, uh, sitting in Odisha look for some phytochemicals. So I'm very sure we are working a couple of phytochemicals, it's excellent, you know, and more or less, you know, if you look, 80% of the drugs are anti-cancer drugs is from uh, phytochemicals, you know. So everyone knows, Paclitex is, again, it is a phytochemical. So anyway, so now the, again, what we are looking for, as you know, which one is the main culprit in, in, in we have a model like breast cancer. We are working very, con we are now our focus is breast cancer. So what is happening? So if you have a surgery, radiation, then, then you are going, taking some chemo, but what is happening after a couple of years, you know, then, then there is a relapse. So patient again is coming to the hospital. So what is happening? So why this things is happening? So this is happening due to the presence of some cancer stem cells. So if you take a hundred cells, so one or two cancer stem cells are there, you know, they make it dormant for a couple of years. Once, once they come off, you know, the, again, they can take it out back, the tumor. So now what we are looking for, we are we have some couple of models for that, you know. So we are developing a team of model where stem cells population is high. At the same time, also we are using some 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 phytochemical to make it, or basically we call this is a reprogramming to the these cancer stem cells to the normal cells. So no doubt. If you, if you use paclitaxel, 90% cancer cell will die, will die. But can paclitaxel, if you are giving, it has no impact to the, to the uh, cancer stem cells. So now, and these cancer stem cells, you know, they have many properties. So what we are looking for, some, some non-toxic phytochemicals, which will reprogram these cancer stem cells, you know, to, to go back to your original state. These cancer stem cells are from cancer cells. So what do we want to say? You know, we want to reprogram them to the, to the cancer cells. So then your pancreas will go and kill. This is our hypothesis. With this hypothesis, we use a foxlin and we have taken pancreas as a model drug for targeting breast cancer stem cells. So this, yeah, no need. You see, this is the uh, breast cancer, I think. Uh, yeah, just a small video, you know. None of these therapies can target the breathing heart of some, the heart of the tumor. This is the cancer stem cells, you know. All your drug is going, you see, nothing. Again, is there. So anyway, so now the 
now our our theme of the project is you know take any any phytochemical use as a reprogramming do the reprogramming in the cancer stem cells make them in the normal cells not not normal cells normal cancer cells so then then your pachytaxel will go on kill with this you know we have this thing so current chemotherapy keep given to patient in clinics short term tumor shrinkage then you see this is a relapse metastasis drug resistance everything is happening here it is happening due to the heterogeneous population cancer stem cell specific therapy overall, overall tumor regeneration so what we are looking for if you can give a co-delivery means combination of this your paclitaxel and some some other phytochemicals which will deprogram uh, this uh, cancer stem cells into the cancer cells make it work so so this is the concept you know and this ca cancer stem cells we call cacs are different they have a EMT, hypoxia, drug aplux, self involved, everything they have, you know, these cancer stem cells. And uh, targeting site of CAC is uh, differentiating your lipogram, cell surface markers, metabolism, drug aplux, pumps, cellular signaling pathways, microenvironment. But our main focus right now is differentiation of lipogramming. So stop the differentiation, you know, cancer cells will become the cancer stem cells, stop it. Or if there are some cancer stem cells, then do something they can reprogram to your nervous to reprogram to the cancer cells. And uh, since you have a co-delivery system, you, we are taking a paclitaxel and also the phytochemical, so paclitaxel will take care. This is again just you know not going so more. So this is the phytochemical we are totally looking for. Since it has a polyphenols, terpenols, many things, alkenes, flavonoids, this, this, this. Are phytochemicals for elementary cancer stem cells? This is the mechanism, you know. So and more or less, if you look, resveratrol, sulforaphane, EGCG, these are in the in the in the in the curcumin. These are again people are working and all. But the problem with these phytochemicals is poor solubility, poor viability, low retention in body, short half-life and poor stability. So this is the, I think, one of the best platform for nanotechnology fellow, you know, take these phytochemicals, use as a, uh, uh, use as a uh, delivery system, you know, where you can solve all the problems, you can make a water soluble, make increase the viability increase the retention increase the half life and also it will be more or less stable so th that's why you know we have the now this is nanotechnology is the solution you know we are developing a nanoparticle then already i have explained these things you know you you can have a size and uh, you can functionalize for, for uh, you know for targeting or you can load how many drugs you want in, in, in here you know so then it can be a good formulation for, 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 for your work so hypothesis is you see again you know this is the tumor this is the uh, conventional chemotherapy you see still these stem cells are there you know they helps again to come back so here what we are looking for we can go for a parcelin induced differentiation this is a we are inducing you know first forcefully we are telling these cells you know you go back to your original state then you know you put the packet and foxlin you know we have foxlin we have taken uh, 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 just, just a phytochemical you know so then you know completely you can you can block your tumor progression so with this hypothesis we have been prepare some particular system and these are the ACM, AFM, uh, release kinetics and uh, data potential particular size. No doubt, next step is uh, take this, we have taken a 6 covariant this, so since this, this uh, phytochemical has no fluorescence activity, so we have taken, we have brought these things and you see, there is a high uptake. Everyone did it, you know. This, again, these things, you, we want to get jet stacking, you know. How, how the optic this is again we have, uh, I have just explained this is a mammosphere suit make it you know so this is a 
three dimensional uh, you know cell growth it is not a two dimensional two dimensional merely you just see from from the top you know but it is a two dimensional three dimensional it is like a ball floating cells you know so it is a just we want to mimic a tumor microenvironment uh, you know in, in, in vitro so now you can so now the question when we give the nanoparticle system you know we want to see you know the penetration you, you see this is a six coronary native this is six coronary nanoparticles and we have a jet stack you know one micron one micron we did it in, in a computer microscope uh, as you see this is one to twenty you see we, now you are going from top to bottom 11th 10th, 11th, 12th, these are the in the, in the middle, you know, you see that the, the fluorescence activity is very, very less, whereas in the, in the particles, particular system, it is very high up to up to 14. So, what it indicates that, you know, your, your, your particle can penetrate to the, to the uh, mammospheres in a better way as, as compared to your 6 minute. Again, we have seen this is the water, what is the mechanism. Uh, you know, it is going through clarity mediated endocytosis. And uh, again, uh, well, this is what we want to show. You see a little bit of uh, this E carotene is the adherent cells, means uh, when the cancer cells have a high expression of E carotene. And uh, fibronectin and vimentin, these are the major chemical properties when, when they become, you know, stem cells, cancers. When they, be, when they become a stem cells properties, this fibronectin and vimentin, this expression is high. These are just uh, markers of proteins, protein markers. And you see, when you are giving the porcelain and uh, uh, nano porcelain, there is a decrease of uh, uh, E. at the same time also you see fibronectin also decrease, vimentin also decrease, that it gives an impression, you know, we, we by putting a porcelain either in a native or in a particular system, you know, forcefully we are telling these cells, you know, you, you become normal cancer cells. Same thing, uh, paclitaxel, you know, again also recently a couple of papers are published, you know, when you are uh, in clinics when doctor is giving paclitaxel, you know, it, it enhances the stem cells. A couple of clinic, a couple of papers are published in, in last couple of years, you know, and more or less the, it increases the stemness of these cells, you know, which is very, very difficult. Now it is very critical, you know, you are giving paclitaxel to kill the cancer cells. No doubt they kill the cancer cells at the same time. Also, they increase the cancer stem cells numbers and also increase the stemness properties, you know, so that we, again, also we have proved it. At a low concentration of paclitaxel, it is happening. So now the question is, personal reverse paclitaxel into stemness. So now when you are giving paclitaxel, there is a stemness induced. You know, now what we did in a co delivery system, when I put paclitaxel with, with the parxilin, you see there is a decreasing, you know, so per, this parxilin take care of paclitaxel induced stemness, is what I mean. You know. So that we have proved it in, in, in a combinational approach. You see, these are the, again, also we did a control microscope by showing the apoptosis back special to. Caspase 3, Cleave Caspase 3, and these are the some of the corporal picture. So now the conclusion is Foxlin, nano Foxlin, repogram. Then once it is repogrammed, Pagmitacel will take care and there will be no tumor progression or tumor regression. Same thing we have proved in in vivo system. You see, when we did a kinetics, you see there is a increase to around. 30 folds if you look at 30 minutes and then two hours. Of course, uh, this porcelain uh, in, in, in a native form we can detect in, in, the, in the after 24 hours, but in our, when we have given in, in a particular system, we, uh, we detected up to 40 hours. So, more or less, we can say we can increase the pharmacokinetics. This is the table, and uh, this, we have developed a tumor model, you see, by injecting. Some some uh, 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 these mammoth spheres in, 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 uh, in the mice model. Again, we did a biodistribution by putting a uh, an IR seven eight zero die uh, by our uh, urine imaging platform. You see, there is a uh, uh, tumor uptake more. 
So this is here. Then the same thing we did, you know, so we have injected so this number of homospheres. Once the tumor develops, then we inject our different control by nanoparticle PTS means your paclitaxel perxilin and native paclitaxel perxilin and nanoparticle. And more or less, you see, there is a complete tumor regression of up to up to 80 days what we have done it, you know. So these are things, this is the model. And uh, conclusively, perxilin in nanoformulation shows improved pharmacokinetics. LCN means uh, has enhanced tumor targeting ability. This is the nanoparticle, you know, liquid crystal nanoparticles. Perxilin or paclitaxel 400 LCN has better therapy. So this, this is the final take of message. And this is the paper just recently we have published in 2020. This is a ACS biometrics. Let's come to the last, more or less, I need another 10 minutes. So is it okay? Next 10 minutes. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's fine. Okay. So now uh, there was a, uh, you know, future medicine, future nanomedicine that they asked for to give a review article. We have just published this thing by our lab. Insights from nanotechnology COVID-19, prevention, detection, therapy, and immunomodulation. Very nice article. I have a very good citations and appreciated by well, many big, big shops. So, so when we are taking a human healthcare, you know, it is not like that's nanotechnology is only for cancer. You, know? you see how we can use for COVID-19. This is the paper we published, you know, in nanomedicine, COVID-19, I think in 20 or 21, you know, I think last year, maybe this year. So now what happens, you know, the first thing, you know, transmission how COVID-19 spread, this is respiratory droplets, touch objects, touch contact within six, and these are the things, you know. Symptoms, prevention. So these are the, also I don't want to tell anything, everything, you know, I think more or less, we are having passed this disease, you know, so we know much more better than what it was written. So prevention is how to protect yourself from COVID-19. You, this is make distance, then you know, don't have say other things. So treatment so far is, you know, this is uh, antibodies, vaccines, repurposed drugs, many things is going on in clinical trials and some vaccines are approved and in, uh, used in the system. Treatment so far, uh, this is uh, what I have shown, you know, so what pharmaceutical companies are doing, you know, they know some of the drugs used for some other viral diseases. So they are taking this uh, drugs, can it will be work for COVID-19. Then you must know this is the antibodies, you know, uh, for, for these things. And the other one is the vaccine, you know, development of uh, DNA, RNA vaccines. Uh, I think you must know all the things it is on the last one and a half years, you know, every day, uh, in, in papers and uh, all, uh, everywhere, you know, I think everyone knows vaccine, what type of vaccine and all. So then now the question is how nanotechnology can help? So we have given a very concept uh, uh, wise. Nanotechnology can be used in various spheres in the in the fight against COVID-19, so as the prevention, diagnosis, and therapy. These are the three things, as you know, prevention, diagnosis, and therapy, three things. Now, first thing is how to prevent. You see, this is the, you are using a PP kit, mask, this is your uh, shield, eye shield, and also suits. So these are, you know, more or less right now, some, some, so all, products are coming with a uh, coating of nanoparticles. Again, I am telling you, you know, as you know, you must be you have some um, uh, refrigerator at your home or maybe some some uh, air pump. You see refrigerator, it was uh, showing, you know, uh, antibacterial. So what, uh, and also in your, in your uh, uh, air condition, it was written, you know, this is antibacterial. So if there are, uh, because it you high moisture and uh, water bubbles are there, you know, so 
maybe what happened when when there is there is water for a long time then some bacterial bacteria grows and also the fungus so what they did on the, on the on the surface they have a coating of some silver nanoparticles the same thing is in your fridge at your kitchen so then then what happens you know this silver nanoparticles have shown their antibacterial properties and uh, not allow the bacteria or fungus to grow in, in that things same way you know so in the in the pp coat pp coat pp uh, pp and your this is globes and all you know they they, they have a coating of this nanomaterial nanomaterials so np that can be de deactivated the virus can be used in the manufacture of face masks face shields safety glasses shoe covers disposable gloves and gloves which are routinely being used for the health code. so i am talking right now just how to prevent so these are the things, you know, antiviral effect of preventing the synthesis of viral negative strain RNA viral, reduce the viability, air purifiers to prevent air from transmission. So these are, you know, copper nanoparticles, photocatalytic coatings. These are silver nanoparticles, disinfectants for personal. These are all, you know, and more or less, I will again show you with this, you know, there are lots of companies, you know, of develop their products available in the market. Next question is nanotechnology in detection. In the same way, you know, as you know, nano, when you are talking the nano, since the size is less, more surface area, the same way you see. Antibody you can conjugate, uh, PNA, aptomor, these things. Nanotechnology based nucleic acid test, nanotechnology based protein based. So this, by this way, you know, you can, you can, uh, it will be used for detection. The diagnostics, you know, this is the nanoparticles can be conjugated with the SARS-CoV-2 specific antibody, which will be helpful for diagnostics. Nanoparticle coated chips can be made, which have the capacity to change their color when infected samples are loaded on there. So you can, you can then tell, yes, you are a COVID positive, colorimetric cancer, based on gold nanoparticles capped with the suitable design, thiol modified antigens, oligonucleotide, oligonucleotide specific for N gene. When you are telling, you know, when you are doing the RTPCR, again also you are looking for N gene, you know. So if that will be there, you know, then, then the N gene will be very high. So the detection will be very accurate, you know. Could be used for diagnosis in positive COVID-19 cases within 10 minutes from the isolated RNA samples. So if you now if you are going to the capital hospital, you give your swab, they will ask you come after for day, three days. So you tell me it is 72 hours. By that time, if you are a positive, then you make positive in your home, house, neighbors, relatives. So that's why you you need we need a good technique, you know. So how to how to oh, you can you can say you are a positive or you are a negative one in COVID. So in this aspects, you know, nanotechnology has a very very impact uh, how to make the diagnosis. Yeah, what I talk you, you see there are uh, I just put a cup for table and it is six months old. You know, by the time you know, I think more more companies must be there and more products are there. Table one showing nanoparticles is for prevention and detection of SARS-CoV-2 infection. So these are the uh, you know type of nanoparticles, name of the product and function. Then nanotechnology in COVID-19 therapy. So you can again what I want to say, you know, you can develop some particular system and use some proprietary drugs. So which the drugs we see already used for some other viral diseases, maybe that can be used. Nanotechnology can be used to develop new antiviral drugs. Can also be used for pulmonary targeting, which can reduce the side effects. Nanotechnology can be used as a delivery agent for mRNA and DNA vaccine. Yeah, nanotechnology applied to vaccine against SARS CoV 2 is, is a classical vaccine. Then, uh, this is applied in nanotechnology, you can go for cationic liposomes, polymer nanoparticles, cationic nano emulsions, BLP protein nanoparticles. A candidate vaccine in clinical evaluation, these are the things. And you see also this is just we have shown in the in the, in the mechanism point. So nanoparticle applicable to contemporary vaccine using DNA, RNA, and some 
it is representative and candidate vaccine in clinical trials and a mechanism of action nanoparticle based vaccine APC. So this is just we want to show a mechanism. So in conclusion, so these are the coronavirus COVID-19 tools. So yes, probably this is the structure, you know, nanotubes tools, inhibition of viral infection, virus detection, vaccine, virus control. So anyway, oh, so three things we want to solve by these things. You know, we are not working in this real give a concept, you know. You can prevent it, or if it is there, you can detect it. So nanotechnology can have a high huge impact on detection. Or at the same time, also, you know, by, by using a by drug delivery or by vaccine delivery, you know, it, it can uh, solve the problem. You finally, you can go for a therapy. So virus detection, inhibition of viral infection, detection of viral vaccines and virus control. So yes, uh, uh, again, you know, so in our lab, we are working in basically in the area of cancer. So we are also working on the oral cancer. And also we have developed some magnetic nanoparticles for, for, for some imaging platform. At the same time, also we are using this magnetic nanoparticle for cell separation. So with this, uh, you know, this is my lab. So this is what the work I have presented today is Deepika, just complete her thesis and in the August, month of August, she moved to University of Texas. And uh, Priya is working one more from um, phytochemical is pipelangamid. This is Priyanka is working on this uh, Nimbolite, again a Nim product. And uh, this uh, Pratikya is working, you know, this taking this uh, pipelangamid for oral cancer. And Oromira is working for this magnetic nanoparticle based immunotherapy by checkpoint and uh, for, for, for macrophage targeting and all. This is our X aluminides. I think all our, uh, this is uh, Sandhana Jutsna is in Utkala University Biotech Department, Sandhana is in uh, KIT and all other seven or eight all are in Europe for US and the Pima still is working and we have two lab technicians. So this is the what uh, in the introduction you have given, you know, this our my name is figured in the list of influential research in the world list. Out of 4,000, there are only 10 in, in our from India. And, uh, probably uh, I am one of them in the in the area of uh, life science. The only one. Others are in, in the other different field. This is the tough list, two person list in from from uh, uh, the Stanford. University database and uh, one more of our colleague, this young responder is there. So with the, our magnetic nanoparticles, we have developed a quick shot magnetic cell separation kit and uh, this is again uh, marketed by Archinex, a small company in, in Venezuela and uh, have a base in California. So this is the digital, you know, spread up, you know, but we have done it. And again, we have the cut means sponge. We develop these things for our own healing. And this, uh, we have transferred this product to a company, pharmaceutical, Ola pharmaceutical in Jaipur for, for uh, commercialization. You know. So technology we have transferred. This is the uh, agreement. So with this also, there is a uh, media coverage. Uh, we are using this uh, cut means bandage for, for, for own healing. And uh, in the meantime, also we have uh, 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 edited a book. I edited a book in this nanotechnology in healthcare. So here I have covered all the, but not in very specific to cancer and other diseases. That book goes in the, in the market. Okay, uh, stay safe and healthy. Thank you. If you have any questions, 